Hey guys, what I want to show you in this video is how to run your programs off of the Ultra 96 using the actual SD card instead of the JTAG USB header. So let's get started. So let's assume from this point that you've come from the Vivado environment, you've got your binaries moved over to here and you're running off your binaries and you've just opened SDK. So the first thing we need to do here is, is set up what we call the first stage bootloader. So what we're going to do is go to file, new, a new application project and let's just call this FSBL underscore HW for hello world. The rest of these should be fine. It'll pull our hardware files from the design one wrapper. Um, let's go ahead and click next. And we're going to go down to Zinc MPFSBL to use this on the Ultra 96. And then we're going to click Finish. We'll let that go ahead and run through and build. Now, when that's finished building, you want to go up here to modify this BSP settings. We normally do this automatically when we run a board support package that's standalone by itself. But from here, we have to go in and do it manually. So let's go to Standalone. We're going to make PSU UART 1 as well, just in case we want to use this with some sort of UART connection. Make it PSU UART 1 on both of those. Click OK and then let it rebuild. Now for any of you that are thinking about buying the Ultra 96 and using the JTAG UART board, I actually had this JTAG UART board set up and running and I left it overnight for a project that I'm doing to run the thing overnight and uh, the board died on me. So I actually had to force myself to do this um, and I figured it'd be great to show you guys how to do it as well. So now that I have the FSBL created, I'll do my, my project. What I want to do is new application project. I'm going to call this one HW and we'll go down and make sure that uh, the use existing FSBL is completed. We don't absolutely have to do that, um, but it makes for less files and it runs much quicker. Click on next. Uh, I want to do the Hello World program. You guys can do it whatever program that you need. And you can actually build the FSBL uh, BSP after you've actually done a program. So doing this at this time isn't absolutely necessary, but it allows me to use the FSBL as the actual board support package here instead of using another board support package and then building from there. Um, but you can have both of them in the file when you do this. It just creates more files total. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and click on finish and I'll let that build. Then insert my C program. Now that we have the program the way we want it, we can just go over here and click on HW and we'll go up to Xilinx and we want to create a boot image. Now, since you clicked on HW, it should auto load our uh, output file paths and all that. And it should automatically set these guys up here. So you have your ELF, which is your bootloader. So this is actually going to say what needs to load first. And what we want to do is we want to load our binaries first. So the next file here is going to be your .bit and that's going to be your binaries coming from Vivado. And then you have your HW ELF, which is our actual program for the processor. So since these are all auto loaded, everything should be default. We can just click on create image and it'll create the files you need to put on the actual SD card. Now, if you look very closely in your SD log, SDK log window here, it gives you the actual file path where these things were created. So this was in home, Joshua, PS logic, PS logic, SDK, all that. So what I can actually do is go up here into my file system. I will go to home and home is actually Joshua for me. So we'll go to PS logic and then we're going to go into PS logic.sdk for our SDK files. Then we're going to go into HW and then we've got this new file in here called boot image. And those are the actual files that we need to put on our SD card. Now my Linux server here doesn't have an SD card port. So I'm going to swap these over to my other file. So I'm going to swap these over to my Mac and I'll show you guys. So I'll swap these over to my Mac and load them onto my SD card and then we can bring in and just show you that it works on the Ultra 96. All right, now that we've got that design on the uh, mini SD card here, what we can do is just slide that guy in. And of course, if you're using the JTAG, you can just upload it via the JTAG if your JTAG's not broken like mine. And then we can plug it in What I've done, I've got this Rigol set up here via my digital lines because it's an MSO scope and uh, I'm just displaying those lines here. So we'll go ahead and hit start on it. So I've got this displayed on my MSO scope here via the digital lines and I've got the uh, time step to 200 millisecond uh, divisions 
and I'm set to trigger off of one of the signals on an upslope. So you can see the actual data pins going on and off. Uh, and if you wanted to hook that to an LED, you can see the video down below. So that does it for uploading onto the SD card. If you like this video, guys, and you want to see more, don't forget to like, subscribe, uh, comment down below, hit the notification bell, keep me going here, and uh, watch the new videos. Have a great day, guys, and don't forget to love well.